Hey everybody, the question for today's video is, are modern shoes messing up your feet and potentially leading to a whole host of medical conditions like chronic back pain, knee arthritis, plantar fasciitis, and much more? Well, the simple answer is probably yes, but what we conclude from that fact and what we do about it is not so simple. I'm Dr. Todd Martin, creator of The Walking Code, where I focus on trying to help you learn to walk more fluidly, more confidently, and with lower impact on your joints. To answer the question in a little more detail, let's look at the history of footwear. Well, footwear of some type, whether it be sandals or boots, have been around for 30 to 40,000 years. So apparently people were being annoyed by stuff they were stepping on the long before the invention of concrete, asphalt, glass, or hypodermic needles. People were shotting their feet in some sort of footwear to cover and protect the skin and the vulnerable areas of the feet from any number of different sharp objects or painful objects that could have been stepped on, not just in current day times, but even in prehistoric times. We do see from studies that people who are habitually barefoot have healthier feet. That's because footwear can be bad for your feet. Research does show one conclusive fact, that people are terrible at picking out shoes that fit. Anywhere from 50 to 80% of people, more women than men, are wearing shoes that don't fit properly. Most commonly shoes are too narrow, but they can also be too short and also too shallow. And improperly fitted shoes do have a negative effect on the feet. They can lead to bunions, calluses, hammer toes, and other problems, and they also definitively lead to increased foot pain. So regardless of the type of footwear people are wearing, they're not selecting the footwear that is fitted properly to their feet. Footwear has evolved over the years, and particularly in the last couple of decades, where there has been a lot of technology placed into the contouring of shoes, the increased padding and cushioning of shoes, to try to take off the impact on the heel and the knees that people presume leads to a good deal of chronic pain. It's true that people who use a lot of padding in their shoes and cushioning in their shoes feel a reduced impact. Unfortunately, even though the perception of impact is reduced, studies have shown that the actual impact on our feet and our legs and the body in general is increased when we're wearing shoes of any type, not decreased, even though we're not as aware of it. Walking in bare feet can teach us a lot of lessons about how to walk properly. When we take our shoes off, we can recognize when we might have developed some poorly adapted walking technique patterns that can be leaning forward, as a lot of people do when they walk, or using the glutes too much and pushing and overstriding. All of these are going to increase the impact on the heel and taking the shoes off is going to make you more aware of when you are doing that. There's a group of people out there right now that are very vocal in trying to support the idea that walking with the heels is incorrect and that if we take our shoes off, you'll notice that you can't heel strike. That perception comes from walking incorrectly. If you are walking correctly, walking with a heel strike is perfectly natural. It is the efficient way to walk and it is a very low impact. I feel little to no impact on my heel as I am walking because I'm using vertical posture. I'm not pushing with my glutes. In my other lessons, I've talked about pulling forward from the front of the hip 
that is what pulls the body into the mid-swing phase of gait, and then rotation brings the heel down in a controlled fashion. So if you're trying to figure out what you should do about this whole problem with modern footwear, I would suggest at least part of the time learning how to walk barefoot. Because when you take your shoes off and walk barefoot, especially on a hard surface, it's going to show you right away if you're walking with one of the many dysfunctional walking styles, like pitching forward or over striding, any of these different walking styles that increase the impact on the heel even more than just the fact that we're wearing shoes. Now there is one caveat to the idea of taking your shoes off and walking barefoot, and that's this. If you're already suffering from foot conditions like plantar fasciitis and it's an ongoing thing, then podiatrists and doctors don't recommend going barefoot. The podiatrists that take care of my patients with plantar fasciitis recommend never going without shoes on even indoors if they're suffering from that sort of condition. Because when you have plantar fasciitis, you do need some support under your arch to prevent the stretching of the plantar fascia and that tension on the connection between the plantar fascia and your calcaneus. This may sound like a bit of a contradiction because I've said that taking your shoes off can decrease the impact on your feet and on your knees when you're walking, but that's implying that you have normal walking technique. People who have chronic plantar fasciitis issues likely have some sort of problem with the way they're walking on an ongoing basis that's increasing the stress on that plantar fascia and causing the heel pain. Taking your shoes off if you already have significant problems with the way you walk isn't going to suddenly fix the way you walk. It's likely going to take some understanding and practice for you to be able to change your gait over time. So I look at the barefoot walking as a preventative measure. If you're not already suffering from some type of heel pain, then take your shoes off at least periodically and walk barefoot so you can practice walking barefoot and see how you can reduce your stride length, maybe increase the cadence in exchange for that stride length and reduce the impact on your heels so you're walking very softly and you can feel the difference. But if you're already having pain in your feet and you have a significant problem with the way you walk, you may not be able to make that change quickly enough to prevent your plantar fasciitis from getting worse. Hey everybody, Dr. Todd Martin here, creator of The Walking Code. I'm excited to announce the October 1st release of my new Walking Code online course. This is the first new course release since 2015 building on the last eight years of providing free content on YouTube, during which time I've been listening to your needs and your comments to help craft the most informative way to help you walk more fluidly, walk with more confidence, and walk with lower impact on your joints. There's a great deal on the course for those of you who pre-register before the October 1st launch date. Just come to my website, which will be linked above and in the description section for more details. I hope to see you there.